Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and I'm sorry it's been a while since I posted one of these episodes. I think it's been a little over a week now, maybe almost uh, 10 days maybe. I can't remember. It's been, it's been a little bit, and I'm sorry it's taken so long. Uh, with E3 that came up, you know, last week, I just had a lot of stuff I had to make, a lot of stuff I had to edit and post, and so I apologized. That was pretty much the only reason, and then after, I was like, I need a break. I just need a mental break from making videos for a couple of days because I it just tapped me out. Um, plus, I got really sick on that last day of E3. I couldn't even go to the last day of E3, and so, uh, so again, I apologize. Uh, I will get back on schedule here. Uh, now that I simplified the channel more, we got Seek and Destroy show back, and now we have this show, um, and then we'll do Old Man Seek, and those will be the three primary shows you see on here uh, until I end those other shows like I might do one or two more episodes of Beyond the Source Wall or Amusement Mile um, I might do one or two more like one episode a month or one episode every other month or something just to wrap those shows up and then we'll just talk about all Marvel DC stuff over on the Seek and Destroy show uh, indie movies everything all topics uh, nothing's off limits we'll talk about on the Seek and Destroy show so if you have any suggestions of topics you want me to talk about definitely let me know in those videos in the comment sections but for here we're Venom only and today I actually have a fun video. We're going to talk about a storyline in this, uh, one episode or one issue in this book here called Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. This was written by uh, Christos Gage and Mario Alberti did the artwork. And when this came out, I really gravitated to it. I was a fan of Gage's stuff, and I still am. Uh, but this was, he was still breaking into comics. I was starting to see his name on more books. He was writing a lot of backup stuff and stories. And then he started getting his own miniseries. And I was like, you know what? I want to give this guy more of a chance. I like his style. And what he did here was something that I always love when writers do which is they take a, a character and they go, all right, let's do decades of that character. Let's do, um, you know, like I think Batman uh, and Superman World's Finest, one of the Carl Kessel one did this where it was like every book was it took place a year later on an anniversary of like a certain date. Uh, well, this one was kind of like that. It's like, all right, let's do the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s of Spider-Man uh, and the Fantastic Four. So it's like them teaming up you know, in set in each kind of like based on stories from each decade, which is kind of nice. I don't know. I, I dug it. I thought it was really cool the way they do it. And um, so it's kind of like what they do with the X-Men movies in a way, but just um, not as bad. I don't feel like I feel I feel like this is a lot more concise. And that's because I think Gage is a, a really strong writer. Uh, and the artwork is really great, too. Mario's artwork is fantastic. So the book uh, part two, like we're going to skip over issue one. We're just going to talk about issue two here. And if you want to pick this up, like I said, just look for Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. I think this is the only way to find it in print. Uh, anymore. I think this is still available in print, but it's on Comixology. So if you want to, you can just buy issue two. Uh, although I would recommend buying the whole thing because there is one solid story going through all of it, uh, but it's just broken into chapters. I think the issue three is actually the um, Hulk, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Ghost Rider team of the Fantastic Four. So again, it touches on like each iteration or each generation of these characters, and I really dig that. Uh, and so this is like the night that Reed Richards takes the symbiote off of Peter Parker. So once Peter Parker got rid of it, and it was in Fantastic Four, you know, uh, hands, you know, during the original continuity, because um, I think some of that changed. Some of it, it went right to Eddie Brock, right off the church and or whatever. Um, but this is like, you know, it went away. This is before it snuck back on to Peter Parker, because Peter Parker did switch to a cloth costume of black, the black costume, but a cloth version for a while. And then one night while sleeping, the suit came back, and that's when he had to like rip it off at the church and everything. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, but this version, you know, shows the Fantastic Four part two, which is the main continuity. So it uh, before it went back on him it was isolated here in this chamber and what happens in this story is that reed richards you know still struggling with being like a good dad he has franklin richards been born um you know sue is kind of upset they were supposed to go out for ice cream and reed is caught up in another science experiment now one with spider-man and at this time you know not everyone still likes spider-man like you know reed does because they they connect on the scientific mind uh and then maybe the human torch does because they're kind of buddies but everyone else kind of looks at peter parker and spider-man as like a immature superhero and sometimes they don't want anything to do with them so sue's kind of like ah, i wish spider-man wasn't here like and you wrap up your project so we can go get ice cream and, and reed's like yeah of course and while they go one of the machines turns on and blasts into the glass to uh, get a sample of the suit and then it creates a hole in the glass and that's how the suit gets out and it runs amok uh, through New York uh, but it goes right to the Fantastic Four it sense the power of uh, Franklin Richards it, it sensed that he had a lot of power so it's like all right I'm going to make my way to Franklin and so when it shows up it actually attacks Reed, Sue, and Franklin Richards, and, you know, Reed jumps in. He's like, you know what? No, I'm going to fight this thing. He jumps in, but the suit takes over him, and we get a fantastic, you know, Mr. Fantastic Venom, basically, and he's stretching, and, uh, you know, at this point, uh, Sue and, and Franklin got away, so now he's like, all right, I got to go find my, you know, my son, and Reed's inside screaming, like, no, don't hurt my son, don't hurt my son, and the suit's like, we got to find him. We need that power. We need that power, 
And meanwhile, it comes across Spider-Man, so it starts attacking Spider-Man, and he gets involved in the storyline. And again, the artwork's fantastic. I love it. I love how Venom is drawn and the suit is drawn in this one. Uh, but of course, as they get into a battle, Spider-Man kicks Reed or, or Mr. Fantastic uh, Venom into a concert, and the concert causes the symbiote to slowly separate. And then while it does, it makes its way into uh, Johnny Storm's apartment, where you know, Human Torch is, where he's with She-Hulk, and it bonds with She-Hulk just as Sue and Franklin arrive. So now it's attacking them as She-Hulk. So now we have a She-Hulk Venom fighting everybody, and then it switches over to, you know, Johnny's able to burn it off and it gets away, but then now it's bonded to Invisible Woman and he gets, a, you know, to use some of her abilities and it makes her part of, you know, and I don't know, I guess this is kind of canon, so I don't know if Donny Cates is going to touch on these characters having been, you know, possessed by a symbiote at one point. I would count this as canon only because it doesn't retcon anything. Uh, it fits neatly in between two Spider-Man events and two Fantastic Four events, uh, like really neatly with like a little bow on it. So uh, Christos Gage, I think, with his editor on this book worked really hard to do that. And so for that reason, I, I probably would consider it canon uh, because I, I don't know. And maybe it's just because I liked it overall. And that's why I consider it as canon. Uh, but uh, yeah, so then, you know, the Sue gets separated from the suit and it goes and it bonds with uh, Franklin. And so now everyone's freaking out because Franklin is, you know, one of the most powerful beings in the whole universe. And so uh, they, you know, Peter says wisely, Peter says to uh, to Reed Richards, he says, look, don't science jargon him. Don't try to burn it off. Don't do anything. Don't hurt the kid. You know, your son needs his father right now. Talk to him like a father. And then so Reed's like, you know what? OK. And then he goes, I'm not going to fight you, son. I love you. I'm proud of you. I know that you have great powers and you're learning to use them. Um, that's why I'm here as your father to help guide you. Me and your mother are, you know, please come back to us. And then boom, Franklin Richards wipes that suit right out, <laughs> like instantly. And then Johnny Storm burns it and uh, She-Hulk actually captures it again in the chamber. And uh, here's this line is so heartbreaking, especially for us Venom fans. This line is so heartbreaking. Um, Reed says he asks his son, he says, are you all right, Franklin? And Franklin says, I'm fine, daddy. I told that monster I don't want to be its friend and nobody else does either. I told it that everybody hates it. Oh, oh, come on. We love that suit so much. Um, so because of that, at the end here, you know, Sue kind of warms up to Peter. Hey, thanks for, you know, you, you, the, the way you defeated the villain basically like she's like you got reed to be a father and that's what helped win the day was the love between him and his son and, and the son's love for the father she's like so thank you for for going the mature route with this battle basically and he's like you know no problem yeah you know i know it can be like you know i, I know i can be a, a class clown at times uh but i understand when stakes are high you know and uh and so at that point reed says Spider-Man, there's something you should know about the suit. Um, you know, now it, before it was bonding with people because of powers, it was going towards powers and everything. You thought this was like a costume from another planet uh, that went on to you, but it, it gravitated to you when, you when you let it out. It bonded with you because of the powers you have too. And it, so it was going around, you know, basing it off that. It wanted other people with powers. Uh, but now we've emotionally damaged it. And this thing, all I can sense coming from it now is hate and rage. Uh, and so anytime it, the next person it's going to bond with, it's going to bring that rage with them. And, uh, you know, Spider-Man's like, all right, well, we just got to make sure it never gets out. And, uh, and then of course you got a scene here at the end where Dr. Doom grabs the sample of the, the, um, you know, the symbiote and he says, yeah, I might make like a biological bomb with this, which he does. I think in Brian Michael Bendis's book of, of new Avengers, I think there is a venom bomb book that we talked about on this channel before. Um, and I think there's, they loosely touch on it a little bit in here, but mostly it was dealt with in the new Avengers book. Uh, but again, it was just Christos Gage trying to write a story within continuity and fitting it in neatly in between two events. And so this was between the suit, you know, while it was captured and held at, uh, you know, the, the Baxter building before it left and went back and bonded with Peter right before Peter ripped it off and it ended up on Eddie Brock. But now it explained the hatred. It wasn't just that it was rejected by Peter, but it was because it was rejected by Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, She-Hulk, and Franklin Richards is why it ultimately, you know, hates everything. And like I said, they're, they're, the thing wasn't on the team at that point in the comics. She-Hulk was. So I thought that was cool that they had that in there and they, they went with that version of the team. Again, just Christos Gage kind of, you know, tying in all these different generations of these characters together. So I loved 
said, if you can find it out there, pick it up. It's really worth the read. Uh, like, luckily, we just talked about one issue. I'm not going to spoil the rest, uh, but it is a lot of fun. So if you're out there, Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four by Christos Gage, pick it up on digital. Or if you can find it in print, you can probably find it, you know, for pretty cheap. It was like $15 when it first came out in print. But I, I've seen it, like, in a, you know, in like $5 bins, too. I think that's where I bought this one. Uh, it was in like a $5 bin. So, um, you know, wherever you can find it, pick it up because it's worth the read. No matter what you pay for it, full price or sale price, it's worth it. And I'd love to hear what you think down below. If you did read it or if you haven't and you're gonna, let me know all your thoughts down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.